I'm five days older than him, which is always, uh, you know, um, surprising to people. And uh, yeah, you look half his age. <laughs> <laughs> no your, diss. Your words, your words, not mine. Correct, <laughs> not my words, um, but correct. Welcome to Couch Surfing, the show where animated guests look back at their big roles, their little roles, and everything in between. I'm here with Jay Baruchel. Jay. Yes. Yes, hi. Let's see what's on. Yes, let's do let's it. Let's do it. You ready? Yes. You ready? Hi. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Ah. Found something. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, All right, that's me. Baby at, Barisha. At, at Fresh Kills Landfill in Staten <laughs> Island, New York. <laughs> Please uh, contact us and uh, come pick them up because they're grossing the heck out of me. It was a children's TV show. Uh, we're educational uh, TV show. Right. Um, Based on the popular magazine. Popular Mechanics, yes. A much more popular magazine than our TV show was. Um, uh, me and uh, Alicia Cuthbert, another uh, another alumni of this uh, show. What the f Today's episode on garbage has been brought to you by the letter P, the letter M, and the letter K. That's the K. first time we've had that reaction to someone what saying themselves. <laughs> there she is. Yeah, there's Alicia. Uh, well, sorry, but we're supposed to... I have no recollection of ever doing this. Did you block it out intentionally, or you truly don't remember it? Uh, a little from column A, a little from column B. <laughs> we're looking at circa 1996, 97, wow. so it's uh, it's a bit in the rear view, but, uh, well, that was lovely. I think it gets better from there, though. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I'm not holding my breath. How about that? Why don't you wait till you go through puberty? Why don't you wait till now you get we're talking. He's about, yeah. Yes! Not bad. The reason why they had the fight end like that, you're going to see, I, I got a tooth knocked out. It's because I have a fake tooth, and it fell out six months earlier than that we shot this on set. So I was just playing around, uh, play fighting, and I jumped on Charlie, and I rocked my mouth on his shoulder, and I just it popped right out. The, filling, the thing popped out. Uh, nobody was psyched about that. Uh, they brought a dentist to set to do like a sort of emergen emergency uh, reconstruction. He did it. All he said was, listen. Coming back to the dentist's office next week, all you have to do is don't eat gum or toffee. That's pretty simple. <laughs> and somehow, I couldn't follow those very simple guidelines. And then they wrote it into the show. And, uh, and, and you know, it begs mentioning how I broke my tooth in the first place. Well, I was going to ask that question, but yeah. you got me there. So. Uh, what, would that it were hockey or skateboarding or anything remotely masculine. Would that it were? <laughs> uh, I, uh, I knocked it out <laughs> during a... Uh, Rhythm exercise in a theater class. Wait, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> the very, very masculine. Okay. All right. You want to go to the next clip? Let's do it. Okay, keep your teeth in. Yeah. No promises. Uh. Oh, yeah. Water stopped working, man. So. Jay and Seth versus, versus the, the apocalypse. apocalypse. Right. So this okay, is so it started as a trailer, grew into a short, then a feature film. Yeah, and it became, uh, yeah, this is the end. Will it? Will it be a Broadway musical at some point? Oh, yeah, it would be called uh, Jay and Seth, exclamation mark. I guess written in cursive, yeah, uh, I think, maybe. is what plays do. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, it was a, a buddy of ours, Jason Stone, who's graduating film school at the University of Southern California, and so he needed like a uh, thesis movie, right? Okay. And uh, so uh, Seth's writing partner and a good friend of mine, Evan Goldberg, was like, why don't we write a movie where it's you and Seth in a house during the end of the world? And I was like, all right, sure. You and Seth go way back. Yeah, long clearly have chemistry. Was it instant? Or was this a yeah, friendship we, that had to be cultivated No, no, we, we got on pretty quick because um, uh, we're both Canadian. We lived together back in the day. Really? And, what was uh, that like living with Seth Rogen? Yeah, uh, it was fun as hell for us. It might have been repulsive to anybody that visited. But we had each other's backs, and one time I sharded, and he gave me a pair of his underwear from his closet, and I still have them. Did you shart during a rhythm exercise? That's my question. No. <laughs> I think I was, uh, no, it was on the couch. I think it was on his f couch. <laughs> you better not do that on my couch. <laughs> yeah, no, no, absolutely not. No, I've got my sh together. Pun intended. Oh, uh, here now we're, yeah, here we are. Okay, Nick Cage. Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yes. I, uh, I am the apprentice to a sorcerer. And um, 
it was cool because it allowed me to live here for six months. So that was a very, very fun, uh, fun time. And I got to work with Nicolas Cage every day. He seems like a wild guy. I heard you guys smoke cigars and you called him Coppola the entire time. <laughs> oh yeah. Yes, that's true. He didn't like that. He didn't? Uh, but he was a good sport. <laughs> Cage is a mensch. Lovely, lovely man. Um, super hardworking, very polite, very punctual. And um, Do you have a Nick Cage impression? Um, Jay, why do you insist on calling me Coppola? You know, I, said, oh, I had this dream about a fish man and he was just, looked like shrimp and he was saying, shrimp, you f <laughs> 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 Yeah, she dropped it for yeah. me. Welcome back to Couch Surfing. I'm still here with Jay Baruchel. Jay, shall we continue? I would certainly like to. Well, let's do this. Cosmopolis, I did not expect this to be one of the things that you guys picked. We are full of surprises here. This was a huge one for me because Cronenberg, David Cronenberg is one of my absolute heroes mm -hmm. uh, for a whole bunch of reasons. And he was making a new movie and they were like, Jay, do you want to come and do one scene on this movie? I said, I'll pick up the guy's dry cleaning for God's sakes. I just want to get to hang out with him for the day. And um, and it turned out to be like a super cool flick. Like, you know, there are not a whole bunch of like art films at this budget and this scale with this many famous people in it. And so it's like... Um, yeah, these are these are these are special flicks, and I and I got to just see how he does his thing, and uh, and uh, our pets was super nice, and um, yeah, it was. What's weird is I look more like a f vampire than he does in this. Like, Jesus Christ, how am I that pale? It's like that is that is some pallor. That's prison pallor. Yep. Next up. You, you had your chance! Uh, it's yeah. it. a good TV show. This is a good TV show. This was like a super fun show. I got to work for the great Simon Rich, one of the smartest, funniest guys in the world, and... Um, wildly inventive. Wildly Were inventive. Were you guys all on the same page creatively? Yeah, okay, completely. Good. We got to do stuff that you don't get to do on TV, and we, and we basically got to make whatever show we wanted and go wherever we wanted to go, and... Um, and we got to shoot it, you know, in Toronto, and, and so our studio was like seven minutes away from where I live. It was an amazing, amazing gig. Uh, very, very proud of that TV show. I like to think, like, we left behind three amazing records uh, that, that are un unimpeachable. You don't skip a single song. You, you, no episode to skip. The show, uh, it rocks. And it was sad when it ended, but again, would rather uh, would rather end correctly and leave behind an awesome you know awesome couple of records. We felt like we were running a racket, you know, because like I didn't think we'd do more than a pilot, and I certainly didn't think we'd do more than a, one season, and oh. I certainly didn't think we'd do more than two. So when it finally ended at three seasons, I was like, yeah, fuck, I get it. This is a crazy TV show. I'm so psyched you guys funded it as long as you did, um, and uh, and yeah, I was very 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 proud of it. Next up. Oh. F no hockey. Single best Speaking movie. Speaking of which. <laughs> it's a very good film. So your hat. <laughs> <laughs> you dropped a few of those bombs on this couch. Um, and your hat. You've made it really hard for my editor, my friend. Yeah, very, very proud of this one because uh, all I wanted to do since I was a little kid was to write and direct uh, horror movies and action movies. Well, and how surreal was it for you to finally step behind the camera? Incredibly so. It was a dream. Absolute dream. You know, a lot of films are shot in Canada. Yeah. How important was it for you, though, to get Canada right on film? Uh, it, it, immensely so, because I think some. This is quintessentially Canadian. Thank you. I, I hope so. Growing up and living in a culture that doesn't have uh, its own voice in cinema, um, in the mainstream, rather, you know. Uh, it, I think it does things to you, and so I think hardworking people that work, you know, in, in Calgary and shit deserve to see themselves. And now you've got Drake. And now, and now we have Drake, <laughs> yep, out of the wheelchair and <laughs> into in, into the spotlight. Next clip. Next clip. <laughs> mm. yes. Interesting. Well, look. never heard of this. <laughs> no idea why you'd put this one on here. <laughs> just decided to, you know, like, let's take a risk. Yeah, so this is the uh, hidden world. This is the culmination of the uh, How to Train Your Dragon saga of three films and six plus seasons of a TV show. And uh, 
So yeah, it's been it's been a hell of an adventure. This is where I'm gonna get incredibly uh, hokey uh, and earnest. But I like hokey, All right. and these films are so emotional they and are so indeed. poignant. And do you ever read the scripts, or did you ever read the scripts and get emotional a bit? Of course, yeah, okay. of course, because I I adore uh, these stories and these characters, and I adore Dean as a as a storyteller, our writer director, and so. Um, I'm as big a fan of these as anybody, and it's just as much of a like amazing, wonderful reveal for me to see it when it comes out, and um, and it's a special thing to be a part of something that means what these things mean to kids of all ages across the world. You know, when you're little, you love stuff in a pure, direct, all-consuming way that nothing in your adult life can match, right? Mm -hmm. When you think back to you know Christmas morning or oh, seeing your favorite movie or whatever it was when you were little, you know. And I got the chance to be a part of that, man. That's a that's a really cool thing. And there's kids now uh, getting ready for university who, who were little when the first one came out, yeah. and that's like that's a that's a pretty cool thing, man. I grew up that's with a you. really yeah, really cool thing. Jay, thank you so much for surfing by. Thank you for having me. And How to Train Your Dragon: The Hidden World is in theaters now. See you next week on Couch Surfing. <laughs>